Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Hey, good guys. Let's go, Rich. Woo! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Mariah Carey, Alex Edelman, and music from Allison Russell with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. This is a night I've been uh, been waiting for this night for quite some time now, and not maybe not for why you think, but tonight was hometown date night on The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> tonight, Bachelor Gary went home with all the women who've fallen for him and can't get up. He <laughs> took them to break out the compression socks. We're flying to Minneapolis, but this wasn't the usual hometown scenario where the guy gets grilled by the parents because this is the Golden Bachelor. It's Hometowns Week. I'm really excited about it because family is very important to me. The last time I met a family of someone that I was about to fall in love with was in 1968. You ready? Okay. I guess I'm a little nervous. Meet mom and dad. I can't tell you how disappointed I am. I'm 71. What the f does he expect? And then after that, they went to the Olive Garden and everything was okay. But the breadsticks made it better. <laughs> The uh, Texas Rangers last night beat the Arizona Diamondbacks to win their first ever World Series after 62 years in baseball. They finally won. After the game, President Biden called the Texas Rangers locker room and asked to speak to Chuck Norris. He, um, <laughs> Rangers beat Arizona in five games, but Arizona in Arizona, Kerry Lake is demanding uh, an investigation and a recount, so we'll see. <laughs> Senator Ted Cruz, who lives in Texas when it isn't too cold, claims to be a diehard Astros fan, but that didn't stop him from jumping on the Rangers bandwagon. He wrote, hot diggity damn. Congratulations to the world champion Rangers and awesome series, which they won decisively. Ted goes whichever way the wind blows. <laughs> Unless it's a hurricane, then he goes to Cancun's, but he's, um, he, and yet he wasn't the most embarrassing Republican of the day. Donald Trump's sons took the stand in the $250 million fraud case against their family business today. There they are, the Stinkleboss twins rolling into the courthouse. <laughs> Looking pretty cool. I, t I haven't seen a more likable set of brothers on trial since the Menendez boys. I don't know about you. It's quite a day. And say what you want about these guys. The camera loves them. This is the defendant, Don Jr. He's here to show his father that he's a man who can ride the subway all by himself. He's accused of real estate fraud and hunting house cats without a license. <laughs> this is also the defendant, Eric. He claims his family is allowed to break the law because his daddy's name is on buildings. He's accused of real estate fraud and eating glue. <laughs> what you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual idiots with a case pending in the New York Metropolitan Area Court. The People's Court. Oh, yeah. Cousin Greg and the other Cousin Greg. Their father was not there to cheer his sons on. Donald Trump, really, Donald Trump not showing up to watch his kids testify in a fraud trial is the Trump family version of not showing up for their school play. <laughs> Don Jr. went first today and took a page from Dad's book of gripes. Before even having a day in court, I'm apparently guilty uh, of fraud for relying on my accountants to do, wait for it, accounting. Here's the thing. 
Never wait for anyone who says, wait for it. <laughs> Just leave immediately. He's go, wait for it. No, nope, I'm not waiting for it. And go. And then it was time to hear from Tweedle even dumber. Uh, things got off to a, a slow start when they asked Eric to raise his right hand. Uh, he couldn't figure it out. It, for the life of him, he tried. But both Don, uh, Don Jr. and Eric claimed they couldn't remember much about any of this stuff. Eric repeatedly said, I don't focus on the financial side of things. He said, and this is his real answer, he said, I pour concrete. He said that several times. He said, I'm not a money guy, I'm a construction guy. <laughs> he's like, he's a construction guy like the guy in the village people is a construction guy. Like, he owns a yellow hat, construction guy. But it was quite an outing in court for the, the wrong brothers. Eric will be back on the stand tomorrow, and then presumably dad will be up next. You may remember the last time the Trump family got sued for a lot of money was uh, for the grift known as Trump University. But you know what they say, if at first you get sued and have to pay out $25 million for victims of your fake college, try, try again. So Trump now <laughs> is planning to start another university called the American Academy. This institution will gather an entire universe of the highest quality educational content covering the full spectrum of human knowledge and skills and make that material available to every American citizen online for free. Using study groups, mentors, industry partnerships, and the latest breakthrough in computing, this will be a truly top-tier education option for the people. It will be strictly non-political, and there will be no wokeness or jihadism allowed. None of that's going to be allowed. Uh, <laughs> what if I want a minor in jihadism? Will there be any room for that? You almost have to hand it to him, starting another fraudulent university in the middle of a fraud trial. It's ballsy. Rarely do we get to see a pyramid scheme being built right in front of our eyes. <laughs> And then we have Congressman George Santos, who will live to scam another day. The House yesterday rejected a resolution to expel Santos for his 23 criminal indictments. 182 Republicans and 31 Democrats declined to kick him out. They're going to wait to see what the Ethics Committee has to say. Santos celebrated his stay of execution by going out to a nice dinner and charging it to some old lady's credit card. But. <laughs> The decision, it's bittersweet, because on one hand, having a brazen liar like this in Congress is not great for the country or for his district back in New York. But on the other hand, it's so good for our monologue. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is solid gold. And I really want to thank everybody for keeping them around a little while longer. Ahead of the vote yesterday, Congressman Santos, if that is his real name, gave a stirring speech in his own defense. From my involvement in assisting residents of New York 3 being held hostage by Hamas terrorists to my, con my contributions in the effort to close the migrant shelter at the Creedmoor facility in Belrose, being a champion for the Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, and my resolve to clamp down on China's growing influence against American interests, there is one thing consistent and unwavering, and that is the dedication to self-service. <laughs> <laughs> like what, at the gas station? What does he mean, self-service? <laughs> not only is he dishonest, he's not too bright. You know what? I'm not scared of the process. I will face the music. I will face the process. I've been doing it for 10 months. Most of you guys here know me. You just flew in. For, you just came up from New York. Manu has been in my office. A lot of you, I know your faces. I know your names. I don't run away from this, these questions. I don't run away from this process. Really? Because it kind of seems like you do. Why are you lying to your voters about your qualifications, your past, being Jewish? Why did you lie to them? No comment. I was, I did not have access to my phone. I have no clue. Did you misuse campaign finances? Why don't we interrupt You will not resign? Pardon me? What is your response when you have to get in the elevator? How do you feel like you're able to serve your people? I have no comment for you on that. I have no clue what you're talking about, ma'am. Have a great day. Why should you be able to vote in such a key election when you've been charged with all these problems? He doesn't run from questions. It's more of a fast walk from the questions. It's the, the old Santos shuffle, as they call it, around the, those halls. The other big story is a bombshell announcement from the American Ornithological Society. You know about this, Guillermo? No idea, no. <laughs> This is the group that's responsible for giving names to birds. And yesterday they announced they're going to rename any bird that's named after a person 
because a lot of the historical figures uh, some of the birds are named after turn out to be racist, and they don't want any, uh, like, Pelicanes flying around. So, <laughs> which, by the way, feels like a weird thing to announce. It feels like something they could have done and no, never told anyone about, and no one would have ever known or cared. The movement was supported by some uh, progressive birding groups, and these are real birding groups. The Feminist Bird Club, the Philly <laughs> Queer Birders, and the Anti-Racist Collective of Avid Birders. <laughs> Who knew there was an anti-racist collective of avid birders? How has Fox News not done a month about this? <laughs> You're slipping, guys. You're gonna have to bring back new dogs if you don't. Another group responsible for this is uh, called Bird Names for Birds, which is, uh, whoever came up with that name should win some kind of an award trophy for awards, because that is, <laughs> you know, we're so focused on getting rid of the racist birds. What about the sexist bird? What about the fluffy back tit babbler, or <laughs> the Andean cock of the rock, or, or boobies for that matter. <laughs> At least we know, now know why birds have been pooping on us all this whole time. It's because we named them after racists. <laughs>